My name is April James. My Indian name is Achpianak, which means men's nets. And I am from the Swinomish tribe. Wak Wakus. Moon when frog talks. Late February into March is the moon when frog talks, signaling the time coming of spring. Spring greens are welcome change to a long winter diet of dried and smoked foods. Giant horsetail shoots, tiger lily bulbs, as well as cattail shoots and roots may be harvested and eaten. Around the middle of this moon, nettle makes an appearance as do wild violets, which are highly nutritional and add a boost of vibrant green and delicate lavender purple flowers full of vitamin C. Forage fish begins to run, providing a fresh food source high in protein and essential fatty acids. 13 Moons focuses lessing planning on all that spring brings. Spring greens are superfoods high in essential vitamins and minerals. Like the croaking of the frog and the robin's song, these nutrient-dense foods wake our bodies from the dark of winter. Swinomish ancestors burned meadows on Whidbey Island to ensure an abundant supply of nettle and shoots. I will be sharing the story of how nettle saved the people as told by Roger Fernandez from Lower Elwha. So a long time ago, our people, they were very fearful. They would often hide in the shadows of the forest. They were fearful of the warriors that came from the north. And these warriors came in very big canoes, again, filled with warriors ready to raid our villages. They would kill our people, they would hurt our people and steal their goods. One man in particular became very distraught by this and he decided to pray. So one night before bed, he asked the spirits, his ancestors and the creator, how can I help my people not be fearful? So as he went to sleep, he was visited by a plant and this plant was nettle and nettle told him I want you to bring your people out to the forest and harvest me. I want you to pick my leaves, bring them back, dry them, and make a tea. After you drink me, I want you to say in one voice with your people, I will be strong for my ancestors, I will be strong for my people, and I will be strong for those to come. So the next morning, the man went to his community and went to his village and said, we need to go out and harvest nettle. Nettle will help us be strong. So they all went out into the forest and they began to harvest nettle. As they were harvesting nettle, they in one voice started to say the chant together. I'll be strong for my people, I'll be strong for my ancestors, and I'll be strong for those to come. They drank the tea and after they drank, they realized that they became a little bit stronger. A few days later, the man was visited again by Nettle, and Nettle asked him to gather his strongest men and women warriors. After doing so, go out into the forest, harvest me once more, grabbing the entire plant, and hit yourself with me. Hit each other with me. And in doing so, you will feel my power enter you. And as you do it, say again in one voice, I'll be strong for my ancestors, I'll be strong for my people, and I'll be strong for those to come. So the next day, he gathered his strongest women and men warriors, brought them into the forest, and as they started to pick the plants, they hit one another and felt the power of nettle. As they did so, they said together, I'll be strong for my ancestors, I'll be strong for my people, and I'll be strong for those to come. After doing so, they became a little bit stronger. A few days after this, they got word that some of the raiders from the north were coming down in their big canoes. So the people gathered in the center of the village and they said together, we'll be strong for our ancestors, we'll be strong for our people, and we'll be strong for those to come. They gathered hand in hand, men and women, elders and children, walked to the shoreline and sang their warrior song in one voice. 
their voices carried through the waters and their voices made their way to the raiders. The raiders heard their song and heard their chants and realized that they were fearful and that they cannot conquer these people. So they turned their canoes around and the people were saved. And that is how Nettle saved the people. The ingredients to this uh, nettle pesto recipe are one third cup of hazelnuts, one third cup of Parmesan cheese, a third cup of olive oil, salt, I'm using Himalayan black salt today, and pepper, three garlic cloves, and a teaspoon or half a fresh squeezed lemon. So as we uh, now take out our blanched nettle and drain it, We'll go it through this step by step. You can use the water that you blanched your nettle in to either drink as a tea or make a wonderful hair rinse for your hair. Nettle uh, tea makes your hair super shiny. You want to harvest nettle for pesto and other uses, uh, including tea before it flowers because many, much of the energy has then moved into producing the seeds. So then you want to harvest it before it gets to that point. So now we're going to drain this well, and then we're going to start adding it to the blender. You can do this in small batches if you like. I uh, like to do it a little bit at a time so it doesn't plug up the blender too much. And then we'll add some of the other ingredients. So I'm going to do about half of it first. And now we're going to add the last of the nettle, blanched nettle, to our blender here, and then we're going to add all the other ingredients too. So here goes the hazelnuts. You can use any kind of nut that you like. Sometimes I add macadamias or almonds or pine nuts, uh, but because I'm wanting to keep with traditional foods uh, today, I'm using the hazelnuts. And then I'm using Parmesan, which is pre-grated. And you can make it according to your taste too, because sometimes people like a cheesier flavor. Here goes the olive oil. Using a good quality olive oil will help your pesto be really creamy. Adding the black pepper. And this is according to taste also. So I start out with just half a teaspoon. Some people like a little less, a little more. And I'm going to throw in three peeled cloves of garlic and my half a lemon. Try to not get the seeds in if you can. And we're going to blend it again. And you can push it down. And sometimes it requires adding a little bit more olive oil, depending on how much moisture the nettle leaves have in them. Wow, it's looking really good. So now we're just going to dish up our lovely pesto. You can serve this with pasta. You can top salmon, halibut, or any fish with it. Uh, it's delicious to cook clams and just put a little tiny dollop in the middle of the clam. So now you just can put that on a cracker to taste test it and see if you like it. Put that on a cracker. That's money, dude. <laughs> a 
amidst COVID, we had to turn to alternative ways to get our produce to people that were unable to make it to the stand physically. And one group that had troubles doing that at times were the elders. So we opened up a elder delivery program for in-village Swinomish elders. I think we started off with maybe around like three or four to begin with and we just drove to each house and did a porch drop of a variety of the different produce that we offered that day. And we have since grown to, I believe, 19 now, and it's really awesome and really exciting to see so many elders take interest in it and hear the comments that they've said about it uplifting their mood and how it saves them a trip to the grocery store and how they're able to find new creative ways to utilize what we are able to provide for them. So it's exciting to see that and um, we're really happy to be able to deliver to them so that they're able to enjoy their produce. I was just getting low on my fruits and my vegetables, so this helps. And if I get low, I go up to the clinic to look for more fruits and vegetables that I need. So these guys are helping sustain our community by doing this for the elders. One of my hopes for this program is that it encourages folks to want to, again, just kind of open up their own journey with food sovereignty. And um, like the objective of our program, I would argue, isn't to share sacred knowledge or to share culturally sensitive information by any means. Instead, it's just to spark the conversations in individual families because each family has their own teaching and their own relationship to food. So just for families to kind of I guess reawaken those teachings and be inspired to have their own gardens and be inspired to go out and harvest medicines that are important to them and to see a continuation of that um, on the grander platform of all of the families in Swinomish.